If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We are told in the beginning that we have isolated conducting spheres labeled 1 and 2 that have equal charges. The fact that they have equal charges means that we can represent the charge on each one as Q. We'll assume that they're positive, although the analysis would also work if they were negative. And they're separated by a certain distance, and as a result of the fact that they're charged, they're going to have an electrostatic repulsive force. Now we know from Coulomb's law that this repulsive force is equal to K times the magnitude of charge on sphere 1 multiplied by the magnitude of charge on sphere 2 divided by the distance that separates them squared. Now again, we have denoted the amount of charge on each sphere as positive Q, so we can actually rewrite this formula as just K times Q times Q divided by R squared, and then cleaning it up just a little bit further, we can simply say K times Q squared divided by R squared. Now we were told in the question that the magnitude of this electrostatic force is 0.21 newtons. So we can actually substitute 0.21 newtons in for this F value right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is a result that we're going to want to hang on to and refer back to shortly. So why don't we set it on the side over here. Now in figure B, we can see that spheres 1 and 3 are touching. We've already noted that sphere 1 carries a charge of Q and as for sphere 3, it says that it is initially neutral. So that means that its charge would be 0, of course. Now we're going to bring these two together and we're going to touch them, like so. Notice that the total amount of charge when the spheres are touching would be the sum of these individual charges. So this would be Q plus 0, which is equal to Q. So that's the total amount of charge that exists between the two spheres. Now here is the key idea of this question. When you separate these identical conducting spheres, you're going to take the total amount of charge, which we said was Q, and you're going to divide that by 2 because the charge is evenly distributed between the two spheres. So take the total amount of charge and divide that by 2, and that will show us that each sphere now carries a charge of Q divided by 2. Now this is a result that we're going to use for the next phase of this analysis because now we're going to bring spheres 3 and 2 together as indicated in figure C. So let's clean this diagram up just a little bit here. Sphere 2 had a charge initially of Q and now sphere 3 is no longer neutral. It carries a charge of Q over 2. So we're going to touch those together. Why don't we move sphere 1 out of here. And we want to figure out the total amount of charge just like we did previously. And to do that we're going to add these charges together. So we're going to take Q and add that to Q over 2. This Q is really Q over 1, and so we're going to have to find a common denominator. Let's multiply the denominator and the numerator by 2. So this is going to give us 2Q over 2 plus 1Q over 2, which gives us 3Q over 2. So that's the total amount of charge that exists amongst spheres 2 and 3. We will now separate them. So now here is sphere 2 and 3. And remember the key idea was that each sphere will now have half of this total charge. So we'll take 3Q over 2, and we're going to have to divide this by 2. Now in this case, it's easier, instead of dividing by 2, is to equivalently multiply by the reciprocal of 2. So you're going to multiply by 1 over 2. And that's of course the same thing as dividing by 2. And so we'll multiply the numerators to get 3q, multiply the denominators to get 4. So each of spheres 2 and 3 now carry a charge of 3q over 4. Now to part D or figure D, we can see that we're bringing spheres 1 and 2 back together. So we're going to take these two spheres 
and analyze the new electrostatic force that exists between them. Now we can still use Coulomb's law to figure out that force, but we will now use the new charges that are present on these spheres. So here comes Coulomb's law, F equals K, multiplied by the absolute value of Q over 2. I'm going to write Q over 2 as 1 half Q. It's the same thing, of course, and you'll see in a moment that that's a little more beneficial. So there's the charge on sphere 1, and then multiplied by the charge on sphere 2, divided by the distance between them. We will assume that the distance between spheres 1 and 2 is the same as it was in figure A. Now these fractions that are in front of the Q's, we're going to actually factor them out. So this 1 half and this 3 fourths, that can factor out as, let's see, we'll put them all the way in the front. So we're going to have 1 half times 3 fourths times K, and then we'll have the absolute value of Q times the absolute value of Q divided by the distance squared. Recall that we assumed that the Q's were positive, so we can just remove the absolute value symbols. And also notice that when we multiply these fractions, we're going to have 3 eighths. Just multiply the numerators and the denominators. So you end up with 3 eighths k q squared over r squared. Now, this quantity right here, this k q squared over r squared, that's the result that we obtained earlier. Go back to what we found uh, from figure A, and we have k q squared over r squared was equal to 0.21 newtons. So we're going to make a little substitution here. We'll just come up and we're going to have F equals 3 eighths times, and then again, the KQ squared over R squared is 0.21 newtons. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should end up with 0 0.07875 newtons. And that is what the question is actually calling F prime. The reason they put a little prime on it is because this new electrostatic force is much smaller than the original electrostatic force. And so we have the final answer to our question.